All right, and welcome back. I'm still right here with you on the platform Y254 channel, underscore on the gram. Personally, mine is at Brian Sakona one on the hashtag going in the morning. And we had asked you a question, how has your business performed for the better half of the six months that we've just ended? We are now on the 2nd of July, probably another uh, interesting ride as well. But right here in studio today, being Innovations and Entrepreneurship Tuesday, we're going to delve into matters tech and specifically opportunities in the cyber industry. And I'm being joined live in studio by Dunstan Akwiri. He's Vice President at Cyber Security IT Infrastructure at Cyber Pro Global, alongside his counterpart, that is Michael Wamboa. He's a Business Development Manager still at Cyber Pro Global. Karibuni sana. Very Thank you. For right, let me start off with you, Dunstan. Maybe just a brief, like shortly, <laughs> like yeah. one minute, a brief yeah. profile yeah. of your profession and okay. how it gravitated towards the cyberspace in just one minute or okay. less. Okay. Thank you so much for having me and, and having uh, Mike as well. Um, <clears throat> so, my name is Dunstan Akwiri, and I serve in a position of uh, Vice President in charge of cybersecurity and IT infrastructure at CyberPro Global. So my journey into tech is, um, I learned tech in, in campus, both undergraduate and postgraduate. <coughs> that is a bachelor's in computer science and, 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 and a master's in computer science. But I was always so interested in changing, making a change in tech space. And the best, uh, the best discipline in tech, I felt I could be able to make real change is cybersecurity. So I ventured into cybersecurity. I've, I've done software, but I wasn't feeling the niche so that is when now I switched to cybersecurity. So I have a very broader understanding of what technology is, how how it operates, the whole science behind it, how data is processed. Yeah. yeah. So protecting these particular um, systems or networks or databases becomes very much easy and very much um, relatable when it comes to cybersecurity. Yes. So yeah. Wow, that's a comprehensive profile, yeah. and that's a lot from you. You studied uh, computer science. Computer science yes. at University of Nairobi still? No. Yeah. No, Masemara University uh -huh. for my undergraduate and postgraduate multimedia university. All right. Yes. Very interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. What about you? Yeah, um, my name is Michael Ombo. Uh -huh. uh, my journey into being the marketing uh, development manager for and the business development manager also for CyberPro has been there basically from the beginning of 23 years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. So getting into tech through That's marketing two agencies and another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two decades in some, uh, and um, I've been able to see the involvement of tech to the point of where being not only just supporting it from the inceptions, uh -huh. you know, the, the initial point of where we were all interested in getting into technology, using it for marketing values, yeah. but also getting to see how tech has also changed our behaviors in consumption, behaviors in uh, uh, you know production, and uh, through time. Um, have been part of the, we can't say the generation, that have been able to ex to see all facets of tech, yes. both in terms, you know, of uh, what does it mean to to trade mm -hmm. nowadays in terms of what used to be based yeah. with the adaptation of tech, right. and I've come to the point of where now um, working with CyberPro, I've come to get into that bit of where how do we protect, how do we how do we educate people to mm -hmm. be more efficient in protecting their systems? Yeah. How do we get people to be more keen on protecting their data mm -hmm. um, and uh, the information, basically the infrastructure of all the organizations yeah. within the country? Right, yeah. a comprehensive one. And uh, you've mentioned the word data itself, and I believe it's the center of you guys what you do. So maybe mm -hmm. probably for a person who is tuning in for the first time, if they want to understand, uh, let, me, let me say the nitty gritties of what you guys do in terms of now handling data, what exactly happens at, at your institution? Um, and being that a very technical question, but I'll just take it up and try to roll it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for, for us, the exception of data, as you say, as you asked, is to understand, first of all, to make the, the learner try to understand what's actually, what is this thing that they are trying to protect. Mm -hmm. So trying to decipher the information, what, what do we collect as data? You know, data f could be anything in terms of the, the human record, the information about, let's say, like for, I'll give a good example, would be, let's say, like NSSF. Mm -hmm. You know, you, your name, your your... Your, info, the, your, your background, your kids' names that you're trying also to put within the, the, the plan. 
uh, the, the amount of money that you've been able to collect through the years, the places that you have worked. Yes. So some of that can be used, you know, in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. I think with the current scenario right now, as you can see the way, uh, if you're a public figure, the way your information is being thrown on the X platforms, <laughs> yeah. how it's working against them mm -hmm. in terms of their privacy. And yeah. you can see some of them lifting up the white flag and saying, guys, mm -hmm. I've, I've actually accepted. So yeah. data, data is in many, is in, it can, it, it's in many forms. Mm -hmm. Data is critical information also for the business. Yeah. Uh, things that they don't want to be public, right. uh, that could work against them with the competitors, mm -hmm. could work against them maybe with the affiliated people they are, you know, they are servicing or providing service to. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have, uh, first of all, the fundamental understanding in any organization what what organization seems to have critical data mm -hmm. that needs to be you know protected and secured mm -hmm. and how do they go about framing that security angle mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, i know he'll be able to explain much more deeper than i am because for me i'm looking at it from that bit as a business person right right um unless you have a different yeah. ways of how yeah sure, sure sure you can <coughs> yeah, you can so um there. The, the, the most important or um, the most critical asset in technology is data and information. Right. Um, when it goes back to the initial even definition of what a computer is, it, it's, a, it, it's an electronic device that processes data. Data, yes. Right? So data mm -hmm. is key. I talk of uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence, it's all about data, data and information. Yes. So data is the most important asset in technology, the most vital asset. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very critical to be able to understand how to protect it. Mm -hmm. And they, it's, it's, it's basically, there are three ways right in terms of in relation to cyber security on how we can be able to protect data mm -hmm. and that is confidentiality yes. the integrity <coughs> and yes. the availability of data those yes. are the only three key aspects mm -hmm. in fact cyber security foundation lies on those three key aspects yes the cia triad as, mm -hmm. as some of um, some of us call it yes. the confidentiality of data the integrity of data and the availability yes. of data mm -hmm. because at the end of the day all these uh, 500 fortune companies governments parastatals media mm -hmm. they are all operating because of data now Absolutely. imagine if um, even you your mobile phone even your it's mobile phone yes. <laughs> yeah. when your mobile phone somebody when you lose your mobile phone uh -huh. or your gadget um, it's what, what would really pain you a lot is the information in it. You know, the photos, yes. the contacts, the messages, mm -hmm. the applications, data. That is yeah. the most important thing. That is what will really hurt you a lot. Not yes. even the device, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so data becomes a very critical aspect that we really need to be able to understand how to protect it. Yes. And yeah. the only way to protect it is by following the CIA triad. Mm -hmm. I mean, data has to be confidential, and that means that exactly. um, the only person authorized to actually uh, see this data is the only person seeing it. Yes. Right? And it should be a professional. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Integrity of data means the data is not changed. Right. Or and manipulated. Then, yes, right. or manipulated as well. Mm -hmm. And then the availability of data, it means that the information is available when it is needed. Mm -hmm. Of course, by the authorized personnel. Now, mm -hmm. imagine you're going to pay for... Um, for something at a shopping mall yes. and then you're there you want to you know you're transferring your money and then you want to pay and then <laughs> all of a sudden you can't pay yes. yeah and there is a whole queue right. <laughs> of people who mm -hmm. are behind you so it becomes very embarrassing you mm -hmm. see now we have lost that availability of data which is yeah. one of the most critical aspects right. in terms of protection of data so yes. data is key and mm -hmm. all these things that we are doing is protection of data yes. and information right. now remember there is an argument of why are we saying protection of data, not information? Because right. mm -hmm. this, is, this is the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Information is processed data. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of information, we are talking of uh, the aftermath. Yes. So data means it's the raw facts, which mm -hmm. is very, very much important. Yes. Because without data, we cannot be having information. Right. So at CyberPro, what we do is there is a balance between two things. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, our niche is industry practice. We mm -hmm. want to be able to actually train on industry practice. Mm -hmm. That means that you are ready for the market. When mm -hmm. you leave our academy or our institution, you yes. are very much ready for the market. Mm -hmm. All right? So there is the technical aspect of it. All right? In technology or in tech, people tend to employ people who are skilled, mm -hmm. which, is, which is important, mm -hmm. which is very vital. Yeah. But there's something that I think we forget, and we need to balance it out. We need mm -hmm. to balance skills and knowledge. 
Mm -hmm. Because in as much as you can be skilled, knowledge right. is, is, is equally important as well. Mm -hmm. Because knowledge will be able to make you ready for the next chapter. Because technology is very dynamic and things are changing. Yeah. A couple of years ago, we didn't have anything like ChatGPT or um, so much intense uh, machine learning or machine learning models or artificial intelligence. But right now, we have so many of them and so many are coming up. Yeah. So when you have knowledge, you can be able to easily adapt. Yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. skills is equally important because yeah. you can be able to actually do hands-on. Mm -hmm. So that is why we try to balance the two, knowledge and skills at the same time. Yeah, that's so interesting. that we have a wholesome person. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, before you actually delve into how AI has disrupted your space, maybe yes. uh, still on data. Of course, when you talk about data, it includes yes. accessibility and handling. Yes. And uh, this again, let's point, pinpoint it maybe to like an institution, for instance, let's say, um, maybe let's say even let's say like a government, part of a government yes. uh, branch, yes. or let's say now maybe like KBC, of yes. course, KBC yes. is part of the government. Yes. And maybe now for a person who is handling uh, KBC's data, how is there, of course, there are Maybe it's the back end, right? Yes. yes. So how do you uh, bring that into perspective, the back end and the front end of handling this uh, data for specifically KBC? Is there maybe a form of like uh, you have to sh swear allegiance and say, <laughs> I, I suck for <laughs> handling KBC's data. Okay, yeah. I swear that this and this, this and this that. that. Yeah. And just in case there's a breach of it, these are the consequences. And maybe the consequences are provided for maybe in the Constitution, or maybe there's a, like a Data Protection Act. So I'd like you to put that into perspective, and then you can come in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that, Brian. Now, um, it, it, I think the broader aspect of it is careers. Right, mm -hmm. there are very many disciplines and, and careers in cybersecurity, data protection being one of them. So it's it's very important and very vital for organizations to understand that um, immediately you know you are getting data, either your employees' data or your clients' or customers' data or information. You need to be able to protect it, mm -hmm. and it's protecting it does not mean uh, you know installing antiviruses here and there. And exactly. basically, it's handling the way you handle the data, right? Whether it's sensitive or it's not sensitive, the way you handle the data is very important. And that's why there is a data protection officer. Yes. Right? Which is also a career on its own and it's under cybersecurity. Right. So data protection officer, you undergo training on how to handle data. Yeah. Right? How to but handle how's your integrity, Pierre? Because I'm looking at it. Nowadays, people, <laughs> <laughs> they snoop and sneak out a lot. Yeah. How is the integrity and, of and this officer? I think officer? I can respond to that. It's yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, there's still the fundamentals for ethics yeah. mm -hmm. that you need to uphold basically yeah? yeah but because of the measures nowadays that you can put to protect data mm -hmm. it means that it needs multiple people to oversee yeah. access mm -hmm. yeah. or rights to perform mm -hmm. um, yes you'll be able to check on your personal records if it was a kbc platform which is giving you have your metadata mm -hmm. you know, your name and everything but for you to check on your colleagues' details, maybe it's based on the amount of rights that you have been given as a user. Yeah. Those rights are being managed by a group of people mm -hmm. within the system. Yeah. And then within that also, you'll find that there's either the super admin and then mm -hmm. there's a super administrator yeah. behind the system mm -hmm. that guarantees you that you're capable of seeing particular aspects. Maybe with mm -hmm. the accounts you can't see. Accounts yeah. can see some particular thing. HR can see some. And Maybe at a centralized. Yeah, uh, it's a centralized. And uh -huh. those are okay. uh, you know, CRM kind of systems. Mm -hmm. And probably there's also a company that's been assigned to store your data separately. Right. A licensed company. A licensed way. company. <laughs> um, yeah, we've had cases of, you know, we gave Sudia yeah, company to handle exactly. this and all of a sudden yeah. people's information exactly. just And then you find that uh, yeah. this glo global or local uh, cloud uh, systems, uh, storage system companies, yeah. tend also to have a lot of legal procedures mm -hmm. uh, before actually accepting to service you. Mm -hmm. Because they have also to protect themselves right. from your, you know, for, uh, based on your vulnerabilities. Yeah. And also if for you to feel that, you know, if any of my data gets to leak and yeah. you're the main source of uh, access, mm -hmm. you're also covered in some way. Yeah. So the integrity part is majorly uh, a human ask, um, mm -hmm. uh, the ethical aspects, you know. But then again, the systems, as if, if you have very good architectures uh, to build 
uh, your data protection system mm -hmm. tend to have to overlook all those aspects right. of where does your system, where do you keep a copy of your data. If I'm saying I'm storing my information on a cloud solution, mm -hmm. how many people have passwords to that? Yeah. So who's overseeing that? Is it the CEO? Is it the MD? Is mm -hmm. it the IT uh, CEO? You know, mm -hmm. trying to know how do we get to make sure secure it. Yeah. At the end of the time, we still have to depend on the human element. Yes. Uh, somebody has to store the passwords. Not all, but maybe the critical one. Mm -hmm. And that person needs to uphold quite a bit yeah. of integrity. Mm -hmm. um, for well-structured global organizations, they do have a very stringent um, form formality mm -hmm. to make sure that the data is well stored and yeah. the person understands the vulnerability and also if there's any penetration of accessing the data illegally and yeah. they're, it's after their access, right. they're bound to be you know, in, in question. Yeah. And yeah, don't come to that. Yes. And, and on a lighter note, I know we, we throw in the word data a lot. And yeah. um, it's also good to, to try to break it down yes. to the, to the listeners yes, and the watchers. Yeah. As in, in when you're buying data from Safaricom, you're not actually buying data. Mm. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> name is, but they, it I works. I don't have data. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> data is the information. Mm -hmm. uh, the what what you buy is the access to the information like you have enough bandwidth mm. but the name bandwidth i don't think would work out very well <laughs> if mm. you're saying i'm buying bandwidth yeah you say data bundles yeah you say word. data bundles so no. it's good to understand that safaricom doesn't sell data mm. or the networks they don't sell data they mm. they sell you the bandwidth to access data, data. so mm. the data is from where you're getting it from mm -hmm. so if you go to youtube you're getting YouTube data, which is now in format of videos and audio yeah. format, right? Mm -hmm. If you come to KBC and you're streaming, it's similar to that. You right. know, if you come to Y254, mm -hmm. Twitter handle, you're accessing data in terms of uh, the context that's mm -hmm. flowing in and flowing in from the different yeah. connections. Right. So okay. it ends up being like that, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we, sorry. Uh, you can uh, so Brian, just to add on it, uh, Mike has talked about two principles of cybersecurity architecture, right. mm -hmm. and one of them is um, separation of duties, right? right. Mm -hmm. So in um, in any organization or institution, mm -hmm. uh, basically cybersecurity is not the traditional IT that people know, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kuvuta cables or, <laughs> or, 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 you know, coding I, or development. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or DB. It's not the traditional <laughs> IT. Yeah. It's something that we need qualified, skilled personnel mm -hmm. that have undergone training mm -hmm. um, um, to be that skilled, to be able to operate in that space. So mm -hmm. separation of duties is one of the key principles in cybersecurity. And that right. means that, um, I'll, I'll give you a, a bank scenario. Right, yeah. <coughs> um, I'm an employee of Bank X and I'm applying for a loan in the same bank I'm employed in, and then I'm the same same guy who is actually approving the loan. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense, yeah? yeah? So, if I'm applying for a loan, I need somebody superior to be able to approve for my loan. Yeah. I can't be the same guy applying for a loan and then um, the same guy approving. Mm -hmm. So, the same, the same analogy applies in separation of duties in cybersecurity. Right. So, if I am requesting for, to access something, some certain information or yeah. some certain access to a system, mm -hmm. they need to be somebody who is different on a different level or in mm -hmm. a different department to be able to allow me, authorize me to access it. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be laid out, structured out very well. Mm -hmm. And another principle uh, Mike has talked about is uh, um, list privilege. Now, list mm -hmm. privilege basically means um, I'm only giving you access to what you need for you to work. Yeah, mm, and show yeah. you the consumer, and this is the front end side mm. of it. Yes, mm. I'm uh -huh. only giving you access for you to be able to use that to work. I'm not giving you much. If you want much of that, you need to, you know, you need to request, and then mm. it needs to be verified. Yes. So it all goes back to um, what you call ZTA, Zero Trust Architecture in Cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So in Cybersecurity, what should really happen is um, I'm treating you as guilty mm -hmm. until I prove that you're innocent. Mm -hmm. 
All right? I'm not trusting you first. Yeah. I'm treating you as guilty as possible until I can be able to verify and prove that indeed you are innocent. And that is when I can allow you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Now, still at the organization, maybe how do you train? Because uh, you, you, you said you are... You are, you are solely focused on training people for yes. the industry yes so how do you guys train especially the back end side of it how do you train your let's say your learners or people that maybe seek your services to yes. be ready for the industry if you can take us to the journey mm. of a person who comes to your organization okay now um first of all um there's there's, there's different levels of training there's beginner uh, there is level. yeah that, that is the entry level there is intermediate and then there is advanced level and then there is skills development. Now, um, still under that, we have got corporate, we have got, uh, you know, um, students, and then we have got just uh, reskilling or upskilling. Somebody who is in IT and they want to switch to cybersecurity or they want to be able to understand the concepts uh, behind cybersecurity. So in all that, there's different customized curricula for all of them. Mm -hmm. All right? I will talk about, I will shed more light on the students part of it. Mm -hmm. So our model is that, remember, the key point is industry practice. Yes. That is what we do at CyberPro. Mm -hmm. So what we have decided is that we want to decentralize this training. Okay. What about somebody who is in Meru? If they want to be able to learn cybersecurity, what about somebody who is um, far there in Bondo? If they want to be able to understand cybersecurity, they can't mm -hmm. be traveling to Nairobi because yes. it could be expensive for them. Mm -hmm. Because we want to be able to make all this knowledge and all these skills um, available to everybody, mm -hmm. not just people who really can afford it, but mm -hmm. even people who do not, you know, um, have the total financial ability or capability to be able to pay for it. Yes. So we have decentralized our training as CyberPro and what we are doing is that we are partnering with universities uh -huh. across the country mm -hmm. to be able to set up academies in them or mm -hmm. with them and then of course uh, do the t t uh, training of trainers and then mm -hmm. um, give them simulation softwares mm -hmm. and then give them labs to be able to facilitate, facilitate the whole training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? So um, uh, the program has been very successful. We partnered up with Daystar University and we are having um, an academy with Daystar University. It's up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, students are registering and, and training is going on. Yeah. Uh, we have partnered with the University of Nairobi. Um, yeah. Chiromo. Yeah, Chiromo. Chiromo, right. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. So there is, in Chiromo there are two things. Mm -hmm. There is the Cybersecurity Research Center where mm -hmm. research is done, you know, innovation yeah. and development. Mm -hmm. And then there is an academy at Chiromo as well. Okay. So we have partnered with Catholic University. Uh, mm -hmm. We are yet to deploy um, an the academy there, academy there. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Meru University, Rongo mm -hmm. University, Jaramogi yeah. University of Science and Technology. Uh -huh. We have got um, KCA University. Right. So we have partnered. So you guys have branched out in almost all yes. of yes. yes. institutions. And we're still yes. trying to grow. Yes. Um, yeah. You know the amount the uh, the university they're actually interested because we don't we feel like it's a need right now yeah. to have. Um, yeah. um, um, just to give a case, we were just talking about it in the morning. Last year's from June to June, 20, June 2020 to June 2023, mm -hmm. CIK got to measure close to 513 million attacks, cyber that is, attacks. That is the uh, Communication Authority of Kenya? Yes, uh -huh. in Kenya. Why? <laughs> what prompted that? <laughs> we, we are, um, as, as also as we were discussing earlier, mm -hmm. we are literally the champions of mobile digital transfers like mm. we are championing it okay. uh, the adaptation of how we are going about adapting to fintech mm. is creating more people to be wanting to be to, to want to understand how yeah. how to create vulnerability yeah. with our developments uh -huh. so there's a lot of need to have early adaptation into what it is that we are creating within, uh, as, as we call it, the modern silicon savanna. Savanna. <laughs> yeah. 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 Being also well, the top three tech, uh, you know, countries within Africa yeah. is also allowing yeah, a lot of Africa. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not really, because we're looking at South Africa and Nigeria, then mm. us. Yes. And I think okay. when when you look at uh, and when it comes to development, you know of solution um, mm -hmm. and especially now the adaptation of SAS right. uh, within uh, within Africa mm -hmm. we, we are championing it right. and, and, and our solution is also getting shipped mm -hmm. uh, our minds are have become to adapt that technology even the even the birth of AI literally chat GPT 
-huh. is in uh, Roisambu. Let me put it in uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, it's, it, it's, it's where everybody's trying to put a focus on what next is actually going to come out. Yeah. So malwares are being used within uh, the region. Uh, you could see the power of X, because uh, mm. if you go global, it's not as utilized as much as we do. Mm. That's why we are capable of taking the... Making the president. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Akuja X. Akuja X, <laughs> yeah. And, mm. and also making um, the, the, you know, trending, we trend very easily. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. You'll find uh, guys in the uh, UK wondering who's Kingangi and whatever, mm. because yeah. they get to yeah. see them, you know? The hashtags. The hashtags. And, mm -hmm. we, and uh, we're pushing how social tech mm -hmm. is being used. Nice. So with that, we've come to realize that even the current employers over here, um, they are having a difficulty of having to manage their internal systems mm. because they are vulnerable yeah. to day in, day out attacks. Mm. Infiltration. So exactly. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not only malwares which mm. are being used within the system to try to infiltrate um, local systems. Yeah, there's even like bugs, you know, just yeah, pollution of the system. Exactly. Them, and, 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 uh, there's very few, like I think we realize there's very yeah. few analysts right. mm. who actually understand how to counter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very few ethical um, testers, let me not mm -hmm. use the word hackers, mm. very few ethical testers of we'll systems. We'll talk about as well, yeah. hackers, yeah. In just a bit. Yeah. And um, very few people who understand about vulnerability architecture. Right. Because as you said, there's, there's networkers, there's yeah. guys who do good networking of systems. Yes. Yes. But are they only guys for hardware mm -hmm. without understanding the internal systems? Yes. So as employers, as much as now they, they know they have an IT person, they need to start questioning, or even some already questioning. Mm -hmm. Why am I having to pay for extra needs to get yeah. uh, additional support? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you find that guys now are doing reverse engineering mm. for issues that are going within their companies. Yeah. Servers are being overloaded. Uh, the internet is being called slow all of a sudden in the office. They are right. Is it, <laughs> was, on Tuesday, was it on Tuesday last week when we experienced, you know, a throttling the, the, situation? The, the, the lag, yeah. right? Yeah. The, um, the spasm of, yeah. and, and again, you would find there's so many angles to that story. Yeah. Uh, I don't, but I don't think it would be the, <laughs> the right <laughs> platform to discuss <laughs> about it. Yeah. Um, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, is that there's, there's a need, but then there's a very huge lack. Yeah. Because I think when we analyzing about, how to set up the business, um, yeah. CyberPro, and uh -huh. how, what it is that we are trying to solve. Mm. We realize we are working with, all, all the employers are working with a personnel of less than 12,000 people mm. who are specialized. Mm. And these 12,000 people are not people who are waiting to be employed. Yeah. They are already working somewhere, and they are very highly paid people uh -huh. because it's uh, similar to um, actual scientists in insurance. You know, they are there but they are very few and they are very sought out from. Mm -hmm. So we, took, we, we saw the advantage of, you can say the tsunami that's coming mm -hmm. and already you could tell with the data that's coming from CIK okay, yeah. that adaptation to security yes. needs to be more enforced now than uh -huh. ever uh -huh. so that by the time we get uh, issues or other ways of being vulnerable in the next two years or the next decade to come, mm -hmm. we have people who have specialized in the skill. Yes. Um, if you look at all the talks that have been happening uh, mm -hmm. about cybersecurity in the country, mm -hmm. very few key figures seem to be popping out, mm -hmm. which also gives you an idea of like, very few people can actually talk from yeah. a point of understanding authority mm -hmm. on cybersecurity. Yeah. Yeah which is a major issue. Mm -hmm. So I think the team at CyberPro, as mm -hmm. we, we saw the need of, before we try to create a school of our own, mm -hmm. you know, and try to tell people, come and learn from our institution. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you already try to work with already set up institutions? Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, there's entry levels, mm -hmm. as in even you, mm -hmm. with, the, with, with the very basic understanding of just you know, typing on a computer. Mm -hmm. right you'll be able to find how to get in, either to become an architecture yeah. or an analyst yeah. mm. or 
Data uh, protection officer. Yeah, data yeah. protection yeah. officer. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a, a tester yeah. uh, of vulnerability. Mm. And there's different angles to it. You know, like an analyst, I'll give you a good example. Um, a data analyst will be able to go through what is actually fake or uh, a place where there's vulnerability on the ports in the right. data, of which an architecture might not have that idea how to go about it. Mm -hmm. So the diversity of creating job opportunities mm -hmm. is so huge, hey. it's scary. Mm. And not only for local consumption, mm -hmm. data analysts can also be done on remote. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the server, if it's cloud, you don't have to be in a particular country mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. But then again, you get to be paid as similar to somebody who's valued as a data analyst for an organization out there. Yeah. And there, there are guys who are making really good money mm. from not only just data analysts, but between the whole uh, ecosystem yeah. of cybersecurity uh, mm. personnel. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I want us to shift to AI, but uh, I want us to finish with the cyber crime part. Uh, yeah. Because, of, of <laughs> course, as a cyber security officer, you're there to counter cyber crimes. Yeah. So, so maybe if you can pinpoint <laughs> examples, yeah, <laughs> you can pinpoint examples of, yeah, for example, if there's a uh, filtration or a mm. malware, let's say, at an, an institution or at a company, how do you guys come to, let's say, curb that or counter that as okay. a data security officer? Maybe you okay. can go first. So um, let, let's categorize these types of attacks yes. or threats into two broader aspects. That is one, insider threats mm -hmm. or insider attacks, and two, outsider threats or outsider attacks. So mm -hmm. basically, insider is, um, um, I want to use you to be able to infiltrate the system, um, um, the Y254. Right, I want to use so and so to be able to so infiltrate their, their, their system. So you can, I can either collaborate with you knowingly, mm -hmm. or I can use you unknowingly. All right. So um, and the other outsider attacks is um, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm, I'm performing an attack on that particular organization or that particular system, mm -hmm. uh, without necessarily using the inside person in a layman's language. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, most people even attack people or are threats unknowingly. Mm. Um, most people who have, um, who even just, by walking, by walking and then you're seeing somebody uh, typing on your phone, either, either your colleague or somebody you don't even know, yeah. and you want to actually look at what they are doing, mm. that, is, that is a hack, yeah. right? That is shoulder surfing. Mm. And that is one categorized as, as part of, uh, of, of a uh, cybersecurity attack because yeah. you can be able to actually see and get their password based on just peeping through what they are doing. Mm. Yeah. So it's that it has come to that level that that is why I started my conversation by saying cybersecurity is not really just for technical people, but it's for everybody. Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Because yeah. we experience data and cyber yes. life every exactly. day. Every yeah. day. And every in fact, I saw Elon Musk as, uh, I think, is it a cyber track? Did you see the Tesla cyber yes, track? Yes, yes. It's a whole cyber computer track. track. It and looks uh, ugly. They're trying to shoot it and everything, yes. and it was not yeah. working. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, yeah, so um, cyber crime is, is, I wouldn't say good. I almost say it good because it gives a very good um, availability for jobs and surface mm -hmm. for jobs. But this thing is here to stay and it's not going anywhere in fact, globally. In fact, it's the next life. The next life, yes. uh, I saw on CNN and it was, uh, she's called Eleni Joko. She has a show where she talks mm -hmm. about tech and whatnot. Yeah. They're saying uh, the next life is virtual life. Yeah. Everything is literally going to be yeah. Absolutely. AI. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Because, I mean, and, and look at it, we also, mm. sorry for, yeah, yeah, sure. we're actually getting there. Um, a good percentage of Nairobians um, opt or choose to get their food or their shopping. Yeah. Online. Online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? That um, the, 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 the guys who are delivering are also learning you. So learning you means that they're capable of pushing that information back towards you in terms of we know x somebody x is very much they buy this regularly mm -hmm. yeah. so we, by the time we start thinking about who to offer an, a discount mm -hmm. or suggest an upgrade of the product mm -hmm. you're probably on the top of the index okay. and uh, it's those kind of things that also that uh, even you as a consumer need to start understanding about uh, your vulnerability, uh, how do you prevent yourself from being cyber vulnerable? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. What password are you using? Are you using your birthday name for your password mm -hmm. that you know everybody knows? And mm -hmm. once in a while you celebrate it and number. you share your pictures yeah. on social and yeah. then people can see ah this girl was born on 12th November mm. 19 whatever whatever you know yeah <laughs> so cyber guy goes like let me try to use a brute yeah. force or a brute attack yes but I'll put first the birthday mm -hmm. I'll put the sister's birthday because I can see him celebrating it on social and wishing a very happy birthday mm -hmm. I'll use the mom's name because it's written there on Mother's Day on his social platform mm -hmm. or I'll use the father's name or the dog that he's naming there, mm. you know, all those kind of things. Even the people name their cars. You yeah. see them writing the yeah. name yeah. of, I've yeah. taken, mm -hmm. taken a knee to the car wash, yeah. you yeah. know. <laughs> and it it's becomes now a matter of, as you said, um, people need to start seeing the, the necessity of mm. being cyber security. Start from them. Right. To the point of where now, how else do I learn? You know, mm -hmm. uh, when when offices, you know, because firewalls can do as much in offices, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are those emails. The Nigerian prince emails will still come through. Mm -hmm. So how do you respond to it? How do you react to it? Do you just leave it? Do you make sure that your colleagues don't get to see this? So because it just takes one person to open it. Mm -hmm. And it becomes entangled within the system. Yeah, right. You know, um, what is the most newest adaptation to the inter to your, your office or your house infrastructure? Mm -hmm. How many people actually seeing your your baby your your nanny camera mm -hmm. in your house? Mm -hmm. Is it managed by a company and then you're just given a login? So what does it mean? Are they also seeing? Your, mm -hmm. your, your nanny camera when you're not there, how many yeah. people have access to it? Mm -hmm. Do you have that data? Mm -hmm. So w we find that in that whole picture is that if there was that introduction, you can call it the CBC kind of an approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most basic security formats that you can actually adapt to yourself, mm -hmm. how far can you actually take it in terms of knowledge? Mm -hmm. How else are you vulnerable out there? Yeah, you know, and, and and those kind of things help a lot in terms of uh, defining, uh, you know, business, um, you know, uh, decisions. Yeah, in terms of growth spans, investment plans, and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. How secure are you against your competitor? Yeah, you know, um, how vulnerable mm -hmm. are you against your <laughs> competitor? Also, um, and, and 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 being able to to sculpture or, you know, or draft out yeah. um, a strategic way of how to go about things. Yeah. And uh, I think by the time we were seeing, uh, we were having discussion with the institutes, mm -hmm. is that we also realized there's the one of the things that also uh, you know, the, the kind of um, restricts people from wanting to be in cybersecurity yeah. is also the hardware bit. Right. And hence the coming up with the hubs. Mm. where we facilitate, we equip everything, yeah. and we make sure that you're not trying to be challenged first mm -hmm. to get into it yeah. by trying to invest in the, you know, um, a more modern equipment, yeah. mm. you know, the software aspect about it, yeah. Yeah. the utilities of that you require to have in there. Right. We kind of cover that. Mm. So by the time you're just coming, it's a yeah. plug and play. Right. Uh, from okay. inception. All right. Yeah. Uh, for social media users, I think uh, this this is a very common one. Yeah. Uh, right here in Kenya, you have people that have been hacked. Uh, there's people, even the, there's children. Uh, let's say a parent leaves home and yeah. she leaves the kid with the computer, and then yeah. uh, on, the ac on the accessibility for them, the, uh, I believe that's the front end side. Yes. What the, what this kid is supposed to consume and maybe use for the part of the day, yeah. it's later on manipulated, and you realize they had to visit a certain site, and maybe yeah. it's not even them; yes. it's somebody else on the yes. back end who is doing yes. that. Mm. And then also, there's been stories of hacking. Uh, I think recently was it a hack or maybe it was infiltration or maybe also spamming? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the banks where somebody accessed and yeah. f money was tempered with and in fact money disappeared it could be equity or family bank if you yeah. check out you'll see that so maybe for si uh, for such yeah. uh, how do you guys help in terms of countering are there like maybe specific systems and softwares that you guys offer solutions to the yeah. clients that will help you counter this are um, you guys dispatch the experts who will help them walk that journey of actually the word is recovery how do we recover from this attack because yeah. it's already <laughs> crisis right 
Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm. Now that is that is more forensics, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what we do is just try to mitigate and and see and analyze where the problem came in, right? Where the backdoor, if there is a backdoor, um, how it got in, uh, which kind of a threat was it? Um, was it an insider thing? Uh, but most of them in financial institutions are insider threats because mm -hmm. they understand the system deeply. Right. They can have easy access to even the server room or the data centers if they have um, on-prem. So um, we tend to give an information based on the forensics, where, how, what happened, um, which uh, uh, um, systems they accessed and how they, they did it. So we can, the least we can do is just, uh, or the best we can do actually is just give a report on what happened, how yeah. it happened, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where it happened, right? The what, what, how, which, that is all we can do. How, how do, do you I trust the footprints of, for instance, of such an event? How? Okay, um, not to be so much technical uh, mm -hmm. for even our viewers, but th there are so many tools, enterprise tools that you can be able to use, which, which actually get the imagery of the operating system, uh, the systems which are being used, um, all the platforms, the whole, it, it, it mirrors the network of that particular... Um, the logs. Everything, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the beauty of technology is that in almost, I would say 99% of uh, what you're doing in terms of digital wise you're able to leave a footprint mm -hmm. you're able to leave a log <laughs> you're able to see the activity the history of what happened but it's possible for an expert to clear yes the footprint yes as well. it is it is, it is and possible. It naturally appears like nobody accesses yes, but it's very yes. technical it is. Uh -huh. yes. yeah very it technical is. but possible mm -hmm. and there's always that bit of um nothing actually that you get rid of in a computer actually leaves a computer yeah. mm -hmm. so if yeah. it's on that chipset yeah. There is somehow a deeper a way, more of way yeah. to actually get that yeah. information. Yeah. So you can go as deep as deep as possible. Even yeah. those pictures that you deleted on your phone yeah. last year, mm -hmm. they're still on your phone. Yeah. It's yeah. only yeah. that you, yeah. you know you don't know how to <laughs> get yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah yes. Uh, but again, at CyberPro, look at it in this way: we are facilitators of knowledge. Yes. Right. Um, for the organizations that go through infiltration, like they have been exposed, they they feel like there's some. You know, it's data that has been stolen and everything. Yeah, or somebody is manipulating. Yes, as mm -hmm. much as, yes, we can do all those things, you know, we can do the investigation for, for you and everything, yeah. we would rather equip you to mm -hmm. maintain that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. instead and of sorting prevent, out, yeah, and prevent yeah. that. External help, you, yeah. I don't think there's, there are very few organizations right now that don't have our IT personnel. Mm -hmm. yeah. All we're just saying is this, invest in enabling them before you start sorting out for that information yeah. outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we, we, have, we, we have created these you know, hubs, like as you hear all those universities that we're trying to make sure that they have it. Yeah. Yes, we might not go to Homa Bay, we might mm -hmm. not be in Kitui, we might not be yeah. all over there, but you can get, w w by, by the request of multiple organizations within that region, yeah. we can equip the next university Mm -hmm. yeah. With your, with 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 your, you know, if if you really want to have that solution within your region, right. we can equip that university next to you. To you, mm -hmm. that's if we work with the university next to you, if it's mm -hmm. a Kuala university, or whatever, and have a hub of which your personnel can come and learn from. Yeah. So this this, this is a solution that you shall have permanently, mm -hmm. and obviously moving forward, even if you're looking for a networker a network guy for an IT system and everything, mm -hmm. you'll want to know if they have this certification yeah. Yeah. Right. of, you know, are you, you can you, yeah, are you compliant yeah. also yeah. do a, a proper networking mm -hmm. uh, for, to keeping, you know? Yeah, keeping security in yeah. mind. Exactly, nice. yeah. mm -hmm. putting security into mind. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and it will help you not have to go through those issues because hearing the big organizations yes. going through this, it mm -hmm. means also the small organizations mm -hmm. are really suffering. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, a million plus yes. cyber attacks is quite huge, you know. Mm. And and, and you, you, we can talk for days how many vulnerabilities. Not only just malware, as you said, the viruses. Mm. There's even fake stories, yeah. which is a major thing in you guys, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe. Uh, and sorry, not. Uh, X guys, Jacob Zuba is still talking. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Juma, Juma. Yeah, yeah. Is, still, is, is still talking somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Okay. How how you could go about it? There is ways to go about that. Yeah. You know, mm. being able to see and please guys don't come for me. And, mm. and, 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 and this me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There is yeah. ways to 
to see how 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 these systems um, can be can can create their own information within an organization. Right. Yeah. Being able to take the CEO's email in KBC and uh, and manipulate it to be I'm the one who's reaching out to a supplier. Mm. Or you have seen those guys who sell tenders. Yeah. And they, have, and they have the information <laughs> of the whole procurement team. Yeah. And they can call out names. Right. We need to know how do we help even our people back home. Yes. Your show shows. Mm -hmm. Not to send out money to guys who have claimed that you have been hit by a border. Because mm. cyber, cyber security, as you said, it's, it starts from you. Right. And uh, now it goes deeper. Mm -hmm. to a much broader way. Yeah, it expands. It uh, expands. We, we, ha we have to finish because we are speaking for one hour, which is too long. Okay. But uh, <laughs> let's shortly talk about AI okay. and how it has disrupted the cyberspace. So uh, especially now that we have the chat GPTs and there are so many. Uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if uh, Alexa is part of it. Is Alexa part yes, of AI, AI right? Yes. It is. And Siri, it is, right? it is, it is. So I want you to shortly talk about it in like three minutes each and then okay. we finally exit and you guys will share details of how mm -hmm. guys can get to access your services so you can go first. How go has right. it disrupted and even catalyzed the mm -hmm. conversation in the cyberspace? And then I've remembered something. There's somebody who was sharing with me about Binance yes. and he was sharing me about uh, the dark web and how people are able to, you know, transact and even do money <laughs> laundering and details will never yes. be seen and how it has actually just you know okay. lit up this endless yeah. fire in yeah. the cyberspace okay thank you so much brian for for that um well ai and ai first of all um ai is not machine learning right yes. these are two different concepts that people should be able to understand artificial intelligence is the umbrella is the broader name because there is machine learning right yeah. mm -hmm. there is artificial neural networks among yes. many others mm -hmm. right so we need to get the difference and ai really has not disrupted um technology i would say it has complemented mm -hmm. in a way but not really disrupting and ai is not a new thing mm -hmm. if you would ask me i would argue that artificial intelligence was first invented in 1939 Wow. Yes, because um, the person we call as the founder or the father of artificial intelligence, Alan Turing, mm -hmm. um, first uh, developed um, the whole concept of AI in 1939. Now, mm -hmm. the name AI was, um, was decided upon in 1950s. Mm -hmm. That is the name, but yeah. the whole concept was there before then, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. is where you hear, you know, um, uh, you've seen on websites, uh, click here to prove you're not a robot. Yeah. Yeah. Now that is the whole, the whole concept is, uh, you know, the Turing machine mm -hmm. because they cannot be able to deny that they're not robots, one, or they cannot be able to actually move in, a, you know, a human being, whenever you're moving a cursor on the screen, it's yeah. uh, in a, you know, zigzag way yes. or not mm -hmm. a straight line. Yeah. yeah. But the AI, when it's clicking, it's, it, it follows points, mm -hmm. right? It follows yeah. points. It cannot, mm -hmm. you know, move in a curvy way like a human being, yeah? Mm -hmm. It follows a point from point A to point B to point C, very straight lines. Mm. And that is why you find that on some websites, if you just move your cursor straight to that and then click on I'm not a robot, it will still prompt you with another uh, um, check <laughs> yeah, to prove you're yeah. still not a robot. Yeah? Right. So mm -hmm. AI really has not disrupted, but mm -hmm. rather I would say it has complemented. Mm -hmm. And um, in cybersecurity, uh, what it has done, there are two ways. There is mm -hmm. both defensive and offensive. Right. Unfortunately, so many people are using the offensive side of AI. For example, mm -hmm. uh, ChatGPT you can be able to prompt it to give you a code to be able to embed in a document. But of right. course, it depends with the way you prompt it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell it it's an assignment and then it will give it to you. Mm -hmm. But again, the question comes in. If malicious users are using AI to be able to target systems and users. What mm -hmm. can we do? Because they are very sophisticated. The type mm -hmm. of attacks that are usually AI enables are very sophisticated. Yeah. Even next generation firewalls sometimes can miss to detect them, mm -hmm. right? Or whichever security measures, or yeah. even a human being, however smart uh, analyst you are or an engineer you are, you can fail mm -hmm. to, to identify them. Mm -hmm. So AI enabled attacks require AI enabled defenses. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have so many uh, platforms, so many softwares that actually are using AI to be able to really defend 
on mm. the um, on the attacks by AI. Yes. Uh, one example is uh, we have got so many products that we have partnered with as as, as CyberPro as a company. Darktrace is one of them, and, and it's a very powerful tool that uses AI to detect and prevent, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And as well as report because wow. you need uh -huh. to get the report and see them. Mm -hmm. uh, and and other companies as well. CTM is one of them, mm -hmm. which is very good. So AI is here to stay, mm -hmm. and it's not going anywhere. Right. So the sooner we accept, the better. <laughs> Yeah. But we need to be able to know that in as much as people are feeling like AI brought in so many disruptions. Yeah, they're saying it's denying them opportunity because there's a video, I think it's Larry Modo who shared, he was at yes. a certain airport. And yes. Instead of like waiters and waitresses speaking the dishes, yes. returning them to the center. Oh, it yeah. was this machine oh, yeah. collecting. So they're saying yes. almost replacing human beings. Yes. But I think also there's a difference between artificial intelligence and, and machine robotics. Mm. Yes, right? and robotics, yes, mm. machine learning. Yes. yes, so I think there's yes. that conflict and control addiction of yes. understanding yes. between AI but, but again and robotics, I, I've forgotten yeah. his name but I, I will quote uh, his words he said uh, forget the prof uh, I think prof Kimathi from uh, Catholic University he said mm -hmm. um, AI is not going to replace humans at all yes but people with AI are going to replace people without AI. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. So AI is <laughs> not going anywhere. I you just that. need to adapt and uh -huh. know that I'm putting myself in a position whereby I understand the whole concept of artificial uh -huh. intelligence. Uh -huh. Because talk of artificial intelligence right. is a concept in technology that has really um, uh, penetrated the market in mm -hmm. Africa and Kenya for now. Mm -hmm. yes. But remember I've told you it's a very long, it's a very old concept. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a new technology. Mm -hmm. We have got uh, Internet of Things or Internet of everything yeah yeah and then we've got cyber security as one of them and then mm -hmm. we have got uh, um, blockchain technology yes right where you're that talking about the Bitcoin. And yes the and the binance and the rest yeah. you know. so it's and, and and blockchain when people hear about blockchain they're thinking about uh, fraud i mm. mean not mm. really right? it's been that infiltrated as well there's, yes that technology i think that's when now white hackers and black hackers come yes. in players correct, right? uh -huh. correct. No, so <laughs> that technology is there to actually protect money in a, to protect your transactions in a safer way right. it's only that in technology people will look at it from different perspective mm -hmm. some of them will see it half glass full some mm -hmm. of them will see it half glass empty yeah right so um and it goes back to what really is 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 cyber security and it's not hacking mm. there's a lot to cyber security than just hacking yeah all right there mm -hmm. is policy that is governance risk and compliance yes. uh, categorized broader into non-technical and technical mm -hmm. right yeah so whenever you hear about ha and hacking is not a bad thing actually yeah. mm -hmm. hacking is not a bad thing it's only that the moment you mentioned hacking it's like yeah yeah. <laughs> These are bad people. Yeah. Hacking is, yeah. is But you can even hire services of hacking. Yes. Of and people are paid very well. Do for you. Very yeah. well now. And yeah. now they change the name from ethical hackers to penetration testers. Yeah, we are pen hackers. testers, we are not yeah. hackers. Yeah. We are not hackers. <laughs> Let's use the word yeah. penetration yeah. testers. Pen testers. Yeah. <laughs> you are hackers. But ethical yeah. hacking is good, not right. just uh, you know hacking. Because you mm. need consent, you yeah. need permission mm. to be able to do that. Right. So um it, Basically, what, what Mike said, um, from introduction uh, at CyberPro, the way we have our classes and sessions to uh, skills development, yeah. we take you through all these technologies mm -hmm. as a beginner. Mm -hmm. As a person, we assume you know zero about technology. Mm -hmm. Cybersecurity, yeah, exactly. there is AI part of it, there is a whole technology concept of it, but of course mm -hmm. we become biased on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is what we do. But one thing is that I would like to insist on is that AI is not a bad thing really. Chat mm -hmm. GPT is not a bad thing really. Um, mm -hmm. A while back, I we had um, a session and it was a CTF event, uh, Capture the Flag event, um, for cyber security and, and, and allowed the students to use, uh, I told them, use whichever tool you want to use. You want to use ChatGPT to yeah. query, you know, you use it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to call something, you, you do it on your own. Yeah. So we need to be able to really embrace it, knowing that it's not going anywhere. So mm -hmm. just put yourself in a position whereby you will not be replaced by mm. people who mm. are more people who are using it yeah. because and in fact be chat gpt is more human because uh, it in fact are human commands yes. being you know exactly right. yes. you still have to yes. articulate Executed, the, yeah. exactly. the result yes mm -hmm. it can't just do it you mm -hmm. have to guide it yeah. and, and tell you this is actually my yeah. they need to yes. have my outcome not like even robots but also robots are human run yes right? yeah <laughs> <laughs> they are. So yeah i don't, they, don't they, see they if we we'll have <laughs> one billion robots taking <laughs> over even the, you know, it, would, yeah. it would be a better life, tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, taking over. if it, it would be a much better, because you see now, you you'll probably put focus in where 
a human aspect is required. Uh -huh. Yes, it's true. There's a, a robot will never be able to replace a human being. Uh -huh. But there are things that we humans don't really have to do uh -huh. to, to be able to execute, uh, where we put our lives in danger, uh -huh. where it's mundane tasks yeah. that can be replaced easily. Uh -huh. um, and, and case in point, like what Amazon is currently doing, right. you know, it's using robotics Mm. and robots and you know artificial intelligence uh, yeah. to make a uh, delivery arrangement uh, mm. much faster mm. so by the time the products are being received yeah how they're being arranged for outlets mm -hmm. for humans it's a matter of reference to data yeah for robots they're already mm -hmm. working with the data mm. so it's a matter of just quick interpretation and they know this needs to be going to outlet one two yeah. yes there are people who lost jobs Mm -hmm. But again, there are those ones who found work, yeah, because Behind of that, yeah, yeah, because yeah. now they came in with the knowledge of mm -hmm. we know how they to manage they were this. Rightly yeah. placed, yeah. you yeah. know, they're they're they're, yeah. they're guys who, are yeah. who came in and they realized all oh, these things need to be repaired. Right. So you changed, you removed one set of personnel, but you introduced a new, different one. Mm -hmm. Those who adapted to right. what is changed, and mm -hmm. those who did not adapt. And the changes are coming each and every day. We have to go. We have less than one minute. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm told. Uh, I, I, I've just remembered, I saw, I saw, I was sitting in San Francisco, there's this lady who bought it an Uber and the Uber is purely robotic. Mm -hmm. Like everything has been commanded. Like yeah. there's not, in fact, she's sitting at the back. Yeah. So she, she was recording a video saying, she's a little bit afraid and scared because she just doesn't know how this car is going to navigate. But the car, <laughs> in fact, Ilim Fikisha safely to her destination, she exited and said goodbye. Yes. Yeah. So I can only imagine if we had that in Kenya. Oh, yes. Uh, and I know it's taking over a lot in the USA. So yeah. I think the future is virtual <laughs> and tech. So last question to you guys. I want you guys to actually uh, share with us maybe what are some of the frameworks that as well the government has put in place that maybe are helping you or maybe uh, is done act a cyber, a cyber act that's helping, a cyber space act that's helping you guys advance in your yeah. activities and maybe lastly as well you can tell people how they can access your services yeah. and how they can get to consult from you maybe to also get to learn from you so you can go first then, yeah. um thanks again um uh, again thank you very much for having us here uh it was uh, really glad to get the opportunity uh i'll jump first of all to where the people can access and then i'll leave him to give out the acts part here yeah? mm. so we you can reach us out on cyberpro.ke. Uh -huh. uh, our offices are in Harlingham. Right. But uh, knowing that we're answering to so many people, we'd rather you did just the digital uh, mm -hmm. reach out. Yes. Our numbers are there. And the website, uh, yeah, you said it's cyber? Are there, yeah. Yeah. Cyberpro. Cyberpro.ke. .ke. .ke. That yes. is the website. That's the website. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, we, we are willing to work with anybody. Uh, on this. Are you hiring anytime soon? <laughs> uh, you know we the, will have you know the, the question is, <laughs> work on Akazi, so that's the yeah, end. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. The, we're always sorting out for trainers. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're trying to grow that as mm -hmm. much as we're also training the trainers mm -hmm. uh, at that time. Okay. So, yes, if you go to the website, you'll be able to see the opportunities that we have. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we scale uh, in all these regions, we need representatives. Yeah. So there's a lot of room for growth on our end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From now on, moving forward. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for the opportunity. Yeah. I've seen you love the juices part of cybersecurity. Yes. <laughs> I, I think this conversation has just begun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. We have yes, not even has. delved into a quarter. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, what I would like to say is, cybersecurity is not just for IT people or technical people. It's for everybody. It's, it's a very big cake that anybody can have a piece of it. And it has a lot of cream that you actually cannot uh, finish it. So um, whether you're from low background, whether you're from, uh, uh, you know, communication, whether you're from business or uh, health sciences, cybersecurity is for both you and the technical guys. And there is a whole point of non-technical issues we have got. Remember I mentioned uh, governance, risk and compliance. There is IT audit, which does not involve so much of the technical aspect. It's more of policies. Um, there is analyzing of gaps in, in companies and then there is the technical aspect of it. So it's not really um, um, techie, techie for that matter as much as people think of, but it's for everybody. Mm. So I insist that if you want to be able to be in technology and then you want to be able to really make a change in technology, cybersecurity is definitely your niche. So you can find us at, uh, as Mike said, uh, cyberpro.ke or uh, our email is ke at cyberpro.ke.